if you take a look at, OK, so you've got the headline inflation is not looking quite so bad, but core core is flat. I mean, is this 2% yeah. inflation target just really pretty fantastical at this point? I think um, as far as CPI goes in Japan, we, any positive number is good. Um, what the BOJ is trying to achieve is to change people's deflationary mindset. And you know, to be honest, the 2% target may be quite strong, but we are seeing pockets of the economy where wage hikes are pressuring companies to pr raise prices and that price hikes are getting through. So any positive number, in my view, would be a good number. You talk about that deflationary mindset, though, and that is really what's troubling, isn't it? I mean, it, it takes a long time, as uh, Governor Kuroda, as uh, Prime Minister Abe say, it takes a long time to get out of that mindset. But does it feel like animal spirits are returning on the investor front? Uh, well, actually, we think it's a very good time to be looking at Japan. Um, it's definitely a beneficiary of the global recovery. Um, earnings outlook is very healthy and it's still very cheap. The market is cheap compared to the US and Europe. Uh, I just want to bring up this quick chart, uh, Asa, on the term, uh, on the terminal, I should say, 80, 80, uh, mm -hmm. 70. And it kind of paints the picture that if you don't look at this, you know, that we know we're close to the 2% inflation target, by a lot of other metrics, uh, the recovery seems to be pretty much on foot. Japan Inc. is on the road to recovery. We've had corporate profits really building up to a record. Lending is starting to bounce back. Why is that not, though, being reflected uh, into reinvestment into the economy by... Uh, they're kind of just sitting on these cash hauls. Um, well, that's interesting. Um, it's an interesting point, but I think, as I said, um, the global recovery is having a, I think it's having a positive change of mindset for the companies. Um, so we do expect company capex to start picking up um, this year and then next year. And if you look at the investments that we make in JP Morgan Pacific Securities Fund, we focus very much on the structural growth opportunities um, across the region. And within Japan, we do see um, key areas that, um, that are quite encouraging. Uh, one is emerging market consumption growth. So there are a number of Japanese companies that have high market share in what they do. And as a result, they're very, you know, they generate very high returns on a consistent basis. Um, the second area that we focus on is technology, and especially in the semiconductor sector, where um, the Japanese companies are no longer leaders per se in semiconductors themselves. But if you look at the material side, or if you look at the equipments that produce semiconductors, we still have a large group of companies that are global leaders in that area. Area. And the last um, key focus area is the ongoing improvement in shareholder returns. So buybacks um, and dividends are at record high levels in, in the Japan market, and a lot of investors um, often miss that point. I, so I want to spin into, you know, just pick up on the point you said about technology, because I know that Alibaba is one of uh, the stocks that you cover and a position that you hold. Not coming to specifically on this story, but, you know, we've just mm -hmm. had this uh, story about this, you know, billion dollar fundraising being led by Alibaba to go into one of the largest players in Chinese food delivery. So do you see this kind of uh, faster expansion into everything online, into apps, into, you know, this sort of disruptive, if you will, technology being more prevalent going forward? Um, yes, definitely. So, um, internet is a big structural theme that we have in our funds as well, as you say. And within that, mobile is definitely the area that we want to be in. And if you look at China, for example, it's already the largest mobile payment market globally. And the amazing thing is that it's only two companies that basically dominate this um, mobile payment market. And one is Alibaba, as you mentioned. Um, so. They're quickly becoming, you know, not just an e-commerce company, but they're quickly becoming something that people have to have in order to, to lead their daily lives. And that's one aspect that's very interesting. Um, and it's not just in China, it's also in India where we see this very fast move to mobile um, happening. And it's, the pace is a lot faster than people had expected.